These dumplings are being served in a weak sauce. Now, sure, some flavor kicks in in the second half, and, you know, dumplings are pretty tasty no matter what. You know, you know what you're going to get. Boy, do you know what you're going to get here. But I, in addition to the weak sauce, I also feel like I've eaten this dish before. Many times! Forget Kung Fu Panda. This latest installment plays like Deja Vu Panda. Now, of course, there's already been three movies, although a while ago, you would think we'd be ready for a new one. Uh, but this feels, you know, not only derivative of those films, but less than. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But also, it reminds me of some very recent movies, like Raya and the Last Dragon, also featuring Aquafina, also with the gag about adorable, mischievous small creatures. Put, I mean, does anybody who make this movie, do they not watch other animated films? Uh, Puss in Boots 2, another road movie, a road trip movie of, you know, scoundrels, right? Uh, going, uh, uh, going to defeat a bad guy from the exact same studio. And that movie is phenomenal. So I, I don't know how the people at the same studio weren't like, oh, we're, we're just doing a, a lesser version of that film. And while they're all obviously talented and fun personalities, Jack Black has been everywhere lately, and so has Aquafina. And I love Viola Davis, but she just did this character in Hunger Games, even down to the costume, pretty much. It's the same character. Uh, Kei Huai Kwan is still doing more exposition, just like he did over in Loki. He even briefly gets another desk. Maybe that was supposed to be funny, but instead, again, with all this stuff being so uh, similar and derivative, I was just like, ah, I've seen all this. And then James Hong and Brian Cranston are doing their best Pleakley and Jumba. They ripped off Pleakley and Jumba. Uh, and I would think at this point we would have moved beyond, you know, having to do a, a wink at the audience and just outright do that storyline. Because, uh, you know, it's been quite a long time. And it's, it's a little sad when you think that we haven't been able to progress at all. Uh, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it. I feel very strongly about that. Two other things that don't help the movie are that the ending of the film is pretty clear about 10 to 15 minutes in. No spoilers! But when you're watching it, you're going to be like, oh, I bet I know what's going to happen. And that's what happens. And it also feels, all of it feels very small. There is no Furious Five this time. I checked because it's been a while. And the Furious Five, they returned. DreamWorks paid for that cast, all-star cast, to return for all the other movies. But they're not here. They're not here, unfortunately. I mean, they do animate their corpses at the end, but they don't have any voice work. So you're like, oh, I see what you're doing. You don't want to pay for those actors to come back. Then just have, have at least the, the, the respect for them not to use their characters without them. Although I guess they are using them over in the animated series, uh, you know, the, the spin-off series, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. Uh, only Dustin Hoffman returns as Master Shifu, as adorable as ever! Master Shifu reminds me of uh, someone very close to me, and so I love Master Shifu. Uh, and Ian McShane also returns as Tao Lung, but that's it. Uh, and the stakes and the settings also seem quite small. In many ways, when I was watching this, it felt like several episodes of an animated series stitched together into a movie, which makes me continue to be nervous about Disney's Moana 2, because that's exactly what that is. But if you told me this was supposed to originally be an animated series, I would believe it. Kung Fu Panda has had three shows over the years, as well as short films and a holiday special. And this new movie seems less like a genuine entry in the franchise and more like a formality driven by business with very little creativity. Remember, I always tell you, Hollywood is at its best when business and creativity are in perfect balance. Uh, and here, we're leaning a, a little bit too heavy into, the, into business. And it really just seems like this is all a formality to keep the franchise going. But at the same time, allowing Jack Black to take a step back. Although, I can't imagine Kung Fu Panda without him. This whole brand. Even if it's Kung Fu, something else, I really don't see how you could do it without Jack Black. The animation, though, to DreamWorks Animation's credit, is top-notch, particularly with the backdrops. There were many times watching the film where I was like, that is stunning, and rendered with such detail. But we hardly spent any time in any of the settings. We moved along very quickly, and that made me sad, because I was like, oh, that's gorgeous. I really would like to, to take a look around, as we have in the past films. In addition to being small in scope, this film is written like an episodic series. Sure, there's an overarching story, but there's more of a focus from, you know, while you're going through it 
on gags and short bits. Uh, that's one of the reasons it moves along so quickly. It's more interested in like getting the quick laugh, doing something funny, and then going on. Just, you know, like a ser- like a, like some animation, animated series do. Uh, that makes it hard for the movie to hold an adult's attention, and it has become largely a movie for small children. There were some children, by the way, at my press screening, and for the most part, they did seem engaged with the film. However, let's just say it felt a lot like watching a movie at a preschool, uh, and all that entails, or a daycare center. And in many ways, it felt like the film was on in the background, and that was kind of not great. Uh, the care- so keep that in mind when you decide uh, what time of day to go. Uh, I've had some rough times with kids' movies. I remember one time I went to a children's film and someone actually let their child watch, I think it was an episode, well, let's not call it any names, but it was an episode of an entirely different character from a different studio and a different network. And they let their child watch that episode on their phone at full volume with no headphones while the movie played, this other movie. I couldn't believe it. And, uh... It, it, you know, I think theater etiquette is kind of at an all-time low these days, uh, but it, it, the lowest, of course, is, you know, quote-unquote family films, which is sad. Uh, that is the that is still the worst experience I've ever had. Uh, the character design is also excellent. That's very nice. And Viola Davis is the chameleon, and her lizard henchmen are particularly interesting uh, with their designs because they're so complex and menacing. I like them. I don't know why the chameleon was so small, though. Are chameleons really that small? Uh, and it, I think they never really got the scale just right. It always seemed off-putting instead of like a funny bit, which is what I think it was supposed to be. And I still appreciate the Richard Scary aspects of the franchise, with many of the animals rendered in a very charming, cozy way. Uh, you know, a little bit like Zootopia. Zootopia also borrows from the world of Richard Scary. Uh, As I said, the second half gets better with a few surprises that are very welcome after a very predictable first half. But then the movie got very predictable again at the end. Uh, It was also very funny in spots. I did laugh out loud a few times, and I was particularly delighted that Viola Davis gets the chance to do some comedy. You know, she has spoken out about the limited opportunities she's had for most of her career. You know, that she was really... Uh, you know, you know, Hollywood would only let her do one thing. So I'm so happy that she's finally getting the chance with a number of projects to show what a versatile performer she is. And she really is. If she hadn't just done this character in The Hunger Games, incredibly well, mind you, I loved her in that film, I think I'd be a lot more impressed with her work here. Instead of here, it just almost seems like an echo of the other performance. Unfortunately, Aquafina's character Zen, uh, Jen, is the least visually inspired in the film, which is a shame because she's so central to the movie. Also, while I love Aquafina, love her, I'm a big fan, I just saw her in some buddy road trip movies, and this is the weakest of the group. By the way, the best of the group is Quiz Lady. I know, I never would have expected it either. That's on Hulu, and that's really a great movie. That is definitely worth your time going to check out. Uh, if all you walk away from this review is going to watch Quiz Lady, I will, uh, justice will have been served. That's a fantastic film. As for Jack Black, this has become one of his signature roles, with good reason. But as we've seen from some other actors lately, Tom, uh, Tom Hiddleston, Keanu Reeves, if you have a signature role, then you bear some responsibility for it. In fact, you might bear the most responsibility for it because you're the most associated with it. And I wish Jack Black had stepped up and said, guys, I love Poe, I love Kung Fu Panda, but this script just isn't good enough, particularly for a theatrical release. He has one glorious shining moment, and that's his cover, Tenacious D's cover of Britney Spears' Baby Hit Me One More Time, a clip of which has enchanted audiences on social media uh, the last few days. I caught it on social media. I was enchanted. I was like, what is this? It's amazing. And it really is excellent. I'm going to buy that song. I, 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 it wasn't available last I checked, but I'm going to I'm going to get it because it's phenomenal. And it's utterly ridiculous that while it's in the film, it's used over the end credits, rather than for a third act battle of some sort. What a waste! This movie is really missing a thrilling sequence, which this song would have provided. It's just ridiculous that they didn't utilize it better. Since this is children's entertainment, any good messages? Well, there's, well, there's actually one that they missed. There's a throwaway line just about, you didn't earn any of this, and... Uh, 
I really like that. And I was like, I wish you'd capitalized on that because that would have been a nice refreshing message for this movie. But it's just like, you really got to look for it, you know? So any parents taking children to this movie might want to, at the end of the movie, say like, well, they didn't do anything with it, but let me point it out to you. Uh, then, you know, there's the overall franchise theme of heroes come from an unlikely place, which they're still working with. However, what I thought was the most interesting and was well done was Davis is the chameleon sharing the rules of the street. And I gotta say, they're pretty good. I mean, obviously don't take them as far as the chameleon does. Don't be evil. But I thought that they had some value. I thought they were worth keeping in mind. So, I mean, probably not the message this film intended. And it's weird to learn the film's message from the villain. Uh, and some of you might disagree, but I thought there was some, there's some wise words there. You know, uh, wise words can come from many places. All right, so at the end of the day, though, this fourth film is more for babysitting. You know what I'm talking about. And extending the brand so that it can create even more babysitting, which is a shame. That's something that's come out of streaming. I mean, it's weird that some amazing stuff has come out of streaming in terms of quality, but then also this new thing has emerged of babysitting content, which is just meant to be on in the background and to keep you minimally engaged. Uh, and that, I think that's not only bad for entertainment, but also for child development. But whatever, it is what it is. And it's also a shame considering how good the other Kung Fu Panda films have been. Uh, so that's my review of Kung Fu Panda 4. Uh, hitting theaters and then eventually Peacock, and I'm sure spawning more animated series down the line. Share your thoughts uh, down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.